The brackets are in and we are ready to go for high school basketball playoffs starting in just a couple weeks. But the selection show right now. Welcome into the WOSN selection show. Hopefully we wrap up this season. Last season, we, we all had our picks. Some of us picked Ottawa Glandor, some of us picked Lima Senior, Columbus Grove to make a run. Uh, no one picked COVID, so we all got that wrong, but hopefully a little chance at redemption this year as we uh, welcome you into uh, this year's selection show. I'm Patrick Kamler, and with us, the best team in West Central Ohio to break down the brackets and talk about all the action that we'll be bringing to you over the next few weeks. Of course, Aaron Matthews, Evan Skilleter, Mark Shine, Miles Holiday, coming down from Toledo, WNHO broadcaster. Uh, thanks for making the trip. Thank all of you for making the trip and uh, being a part of the program today. We have a lot to get to, and we have a lot to talk about. Doing two shows, actually, over the next two days. Tonight, divisions one through three will go over as in-depth as we can fit in in the next 60 minutes. Tomorrow, we'll do division four and uh, strap in because we've got a lot of things to cover and get into. And we're going to start right now with Division One in the Lake District, Lima Seniors District. The Spartans drawing the number one seed, and they'll take on uh, Madison Comp coming up with the 18 seed there. And uh, we'll get into my interview with Quincy Simpson here in just a moment. And Mark, I'll go to you because <laughs> I tried to get him to talk about a little further in the bracket, as we kind of all do with the coaches. And Quincy, I, I've I asked him this for three years. He just won't take the bait. He's just focused one game at a time, the first team that's in front of him, and that's still where Q is this year. Yeah, well, I can tell you what, Patrick. Every single coach says that, and every single coach has looked at the bracket through the <laughs> regional finals because they're planning who they're going to scout and who they want to see and how they want to get tape. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the mode you have to take with your team, but I guarantee you everybody looks ahead. LeBron James goes zero dark 30 come playoff time. Quincy's already gone zero dark 30 as well uh, with this Lima Senior Ball Club. And the thing is for the Spartans, and this is new this year, at least in the Northwest District, they're going to be home for that first game against Mansfield-Madison. One of the things that I talked about with Quincy Simpson was this whole idea of being able to play in front of his of their home team with COVID making that a little different, not able to have as many people turn out, but they're still excited to have a home game in the playoffs. Uh, I was able to talk to Quincy Simpson earlier this week in this segment sponsored by Web Insurance. And here is what the Lima Senior Spartan head coach had to say. On the WSN Selection Show, I'm joined by Lima Senior Head Coach Quincy Simpson. Coach, first of all, uh, thanks for your time uh, today as, uh, as we chat. You know, you've had some uh, challenges with dealing with the schedule, with things going on in the Three Rivers Conference, and you've had to, in some cases, find new opponents on the fly. How have how has your team responded to that, and your coaching staff responded to that challenge this year? You know, it's been tough. Um, the way that we've played <clears throat> our schedule um, throughout this part, you know, of the season, obviously, it's been tough for everyone. But I think more importantly. Our kids have been mentally locked in. They've been dialed in um, to the things that we we've done. Uh, we haven't we haven't had an opportunity to throw the whole kitchen sink at our guys on tendencies and how we want to play. So we had to minimize things and kind of go over the things that we felt was important enough to have some success. Um, we've played all man to man defense every game this year, which. We are 90% defensive, man-to-man -man defensive team anyway. But we felt with our personnel this year, we would do a lot, a lot more zone. Um, but, hey, being being on quarantine three or four times <laughs> already this year, uh, it, it, it eliminates that. Um, so we just try to focus on uh, what we can do good in our man-to-man -man tendencies. Um, our half-court man-to-man -man needs polished up. Uh, so we're – you know, we're going to take, you know, this this entire week and try to strengthen that. Has there been a need um, to streamline any sort of playbook that you have available or any type of uh, looks either defensively or offensively that you uh, give to the guys or, or give to opponents just because of the of the truncated timetable you guys have worked with this season? You know, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, it's, it's crazy because we changed our whole offense this year um this was the year that we felt with our personnel we could do some things differently um and so we changed basically our entire offense now there are a couple 
a couple set plays that we still hold on to that that have been successful for us in the past. But our base offense, we've changed it. And uh, it, it gives kids more opportunity to have a green light, more opportunities to, to do some things. Um, and we've had some success when we're patient. Um, but other than that, you know, I think with the team that we have this year, we su- we've surprised a lot of people because we're not as talented top to bottom. Um, but I think this is probably the best together team that I've had since being here. Um, they all love each other. They all want to win and, and they all play well together. It, it seems like with this year, you talk about change around the offense, that this is a Lima senior team that doesn't necessarily need a one guy to get all the points or to have the offense kind of run through him. You guys uh, seem to step up and have <clears throat> different guys or a couple different guys who, who show up and really kind of lead the offense night in and night out. Is that a, is that a pretty fair assessment of Spartan basketball this season? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the first couple of years that I was here, you know, obviously my son was, was the meat potatoes of what we wanted to do. Um, and, and then we had, <clears throat> you know, Jarius Ward was next up and then Josiah Fulcher along with Jameer Simpson. Um, but this year's group, you know, uh, we have some guys that, if they were on any other team in the state, they probably would be averaging more points. Um, but, you know, you can't really target one or two guys. Um, obviously, you know, Jordan Rollins, Khalil Luster, Jaron Mayo, Cam Miles, those guys are all fantastic for us. And they all bring something different to the table. Um, you know, they all accept their roles. Um, those guys have been waiting patiently for this for this opportunity, and they're taking full advantage of it. And, and, and more importantly, they're buying in to understanding how we win and how we get wins from a defensive standpoint. You know, last season you guys were set. You mentioned a lot of those guys from from last season. You were set for a regional final with St. Edward. COVID, like many like many basketball teams, stopped the season cold for you. Uh, what impact have have you seen on your guys so far this season on maybe a, a sense of urgency or uh, is, how have they responded to playing basketball in, in essentially a COVID era this season? Definitely a sense of urgency. Definitely. Um, you know, we start the season off and we're, we're on shutdown for two weeks. Uh, we just had another quarantine for a, uh, a couple of weeks. But, you know, those these guys were wondering if we would even have a season. So to get these guys to come to practice, practice hard, and, you know, practice with a high level intensity that we do um, to get them to, to buy in and accept that and trust the process that, you know, hey, if we have a season, it won't be fans. You know, these guys have waited for so long to be able to play at this stage. And now a little adversity comes, you know, no fans. Um, we don't know if we're going to have a season day in, day out. We don't know if we're going to play another game or who it's going to be against. So those are some of the roadblocks that we faced early on. But again, they stayed, they stayed together. Um, they trusted each other. They trusted the staff. And we were able to put a schedule together that we felt was extremely competitive. Um, we've lost seven, obviously seven track games. Uh, but some of the games that we were able to replace, um, we felt helped us tremendously um, along with our with our scrimmages so you know I'm, I'm proud of these guys you know we're not we're still a ways from where I believe we could be um, you know but but to be uh, 12 and 2 at this point you know I couldn't be more more excited for the guys head coach Quincy Simpson thank you so very much for uh, your time and uh, good luck against Madison uh, comp here in a couple of weeks coach thank you very much all right, so that was hearing from Quincy Simpson. It was just kind of a staggering to me, Evan, to hear that he thinks that Lima Senior can actually play better. And if you take a look at the rest of their bracket, you look at Sylvania Northview coming out of the four seed, a pretty tough team. But you look at beyond that, and this Lima Senior team may have a rematch, and it may be with Finley coming up in the, in the regionals. Yeah, Lima Senior, listen, he said it best. Every guy knows their role on that squad. 
And it's a team, you saw the highlights, right? Where, how, how many passes did you see a, a guard making out of the paint to a guy on the perimeter or dumping it off inside? They've got two really good guards that can slash, they move the defense, they know their role, they can distribute, and they've got guys that can either knock down shots or attack the basket. Maybe not the biggest team that you'll see, especially in Division One, but it's a team that, like, like we said, they know their roles. They know what they need to do. Look at that pass right there to the corner, knock down shot. They'll do that all day. They move the ball quickly. They're a really tough team to defend. And Coach Simpson mentioned the, the defensive side of the ball as well. They'll pressure you for the entire length of the court, for the entire length of the game. Um, and it's a team that could certainly make a deep run. And I'd love to see them go up against Finley again because that was a fantastic game. Spartans had something of a rematch, not necessarily a rematch, a game that was supposed to happen but never did, their matchup against St. Edward. Of course, they came out on the short end of that, but it's really hard to look at that game and go, that's exactly how it would have turned out in 2020 because both teams were different. And you have to think, Aaron, that the advantage that Lima Senior has has been the fact that they've been able to schedule these other teams that they would not normally see around this area. You think that's got to give them some additional legs for a tournament run? Absolutely, and I'll go on record right now and say, in my opinion, this is the best job Quincy Simpson has done as head coach from an overall perspective, and it would be a crying shame if he's not coach of the year in Division One in Northwest Ohio, perhaps maybe even in the state of Ohio with the job that they've done with all the different roadblocks that have been thrown to the Spartans' way. And, Mark, you have been around Lima Senior Basketball forever. I mean, this team is – not forever, ever, but you know, <laughs> at least at least since a peach basket was there. <laughs> but I think you would also agree with that assessment too, just because we didn't know what we were getting this year yeah. out of a Lima Senior Basketball Program. <laughs> we'll look for footage of you and Naismith and Benny the game here later on, later on in the show. And it won't be the first time that you hear us stumping for a particular uh, coach or player with a particular accolade coming up at the end of this season. Spartans in action in a couple of weeks, and we wish Lima Senior and Quincy Simpson the best of luck. We're going to take a break and come right back to Division Two. Lots to talk about yet on the WOSN Selection Show. Stick around. Welcome back to the WOSN Selection Show as we get you into Division Two, starting in the top half of the Spencerville District and a lot of local teams, of course, in that one. Shawnee at 17-1, and one, the class of that particular top half of the district, probably one of the teams to beat, if not the team to beat, in all of Division Two. Of course, they have the bye taking on the, I don't want to just blow past Elida and Kenton, but there's a pretty good shot that Shawnee's going to get past whoever wins the 10-11 and 11 matchup. So they'll get the winner of Defiance and Van Wert. Of course, Shawnee, one of the teams who had their season interrupted last year. And uh, Aaron Matthews, thanks to Web Insurance, able to sit down with head coach Mark Triplett and talk about what the season and what this group has meant to him and to Shawnee. Mark Triplett, head coach of the Shawnee Indians, joining us here on the WOSN Selection Show. Obviously, your body of work earned you that number one seed. I know you were pleased with that. Was there really anything, Mark, that jumped out at you? Uh, the rest of the uh, WBL super sectional, so to speak. No, not really. You know, looking at that, I felt like there were a few teams that maybe uh, up or down a spot. But for the most part, I thought it went pretty much as most teams thought it would. How, how nice was it to have uh, Tyson Elwer back in the lineup this week? You and I talked last week as part of our prep profile. Um, it, minutes restriction, my foot, dude. Come on. It's like, oh, he's going to just play a little bit here and there. I think he played 25 minutes against Trotwood on Saturday. We, we played him about 12 minutes on Friday night, and uh, he, he was feeling pretty good. Um, you know, I thought he had a few moments where he didn't look great on Friday, and, and he basically told me he had, like, a back spasm. So, you know, he wouldn't be honest with me on Friday night because he didn't want me to take him out. But then when we actually got him to talk, we realized it was more um, non-foot issues. So we were pretty happy with how he looked. And, you know, Saturday with the adrenaline flowing, he did not want to come out of the game. He did get in some early foul trouble. So I had to pull him a little bit there. But uh, he is an absolute difference maker, and we have badly missed him. And we were thrilled to have him back last weekend. Two-part question here for you. Obviously, you look at uh, the Trotwood game and a statement game for the Shawnee basketball program, maybe as big of a statement game ever uh, for the program. George Mangus comes out, scores 57 points. A, was it a statement for George? And B, does he deserve to be Mr. Basketball? Um, I think that George just does what George does, and I don't think he was trying to do anything spectacular. You know, our, our guys do a really nice job of finding him and getting him the basketball and he moves without the basketball better than any kid I've ever seen. So, um, you know, points came in bunches with the style of play of that game. And 
our guy's ability to find him deep against that pressure. Um, is George Mangus Mr. Basketball? Yeah, I think that he is without a doubt uh, one of the top players in the state of Ohio. His body of work is incredible. 70 varsity games. He's got 1,829 points in 70 games now. And um, what he's been able to do on a night in, night out basis, his consistency, he scored double figures every single varsity game he's ever played in. Um, he is one talented kid and, you know, our, our style of play and our, our guy's ability to find him really, um, they just play so well together. Mark, let's uh, talk for a minute as well um, about the, the draw. And obviously you've got that one seed. It's a rarity that you get a home game uh, this year. You're going to have the, the winner of Elida and Kenton. they got to play each other for the opportunity to come to your house. How special is it not just for you, but for your community to get another home game, even though there's a restriction on attendance? Yeah, our guys were thrilled about that. You know, that they didn't really realize that was happening until here in the last week when I told them. Um, we love Lappin. You know, we, we miss Lappin being what it truly has been for us the last few years. But another game in our gym and another opportunity for those go those guys to get on the floor together is something that we're excited about for that tournament game. Mark, as uh, you prepare for your tournament run, what is the biggest thing that you want to focus on with your ball club without them looking too far ahead? You know, we, we just focus on what we can control. And with, with all the uncertainties of everything this season, it's finding a way to get in the gym and get better every single time you get an opportunity to do so. I feel like if we can continue to find ways to get better each day, um, you know, we have some big non-league tests and two two league games left. And, and you know, we want to be playing our best basketball as March um, rolls around here in the end of February. And I think that we're getting closer to that now that Tyson's back and healthy. But, um, you know, you don't want to peak too early, but you do want to start peaking as we start getting into tournament play. Your ball club's got unfinished business, to put it mildly, from last year, from having your season cut short. Um, how along the same lines of what I just asked you, I mean, is it just something where you've tried to focus on one game at a time, but also at the same time as you get closer to the tournament said, guys, remember a year ago where we were and where we could end up being, you know, God forbid something happens? Yeah, it's something that, you know, we talked a lot about to start the season that we honestly have no idea how this season's going to play out, uh, what games are going to have to get canceled, if there's going to be you know, stretches of, of basketball we don't get to, to be played. So it's an opportunity that we've had now 18 times to get on the floor together with games. And uh, we feel pretty good about our body of work and about the way we're playing at this point in the season. But um, th there's still uncertainty. And you, you just never know with COVID protocols and the way things go that any one day may be your last. So we just have to take advantage of each opportunity we get. And uh, we're looking forward to that tournament run. How special is this group to you and what have they meant to the Shawnee basketball program in your tenure? Uh, they, they've been unbelievable. Uh, their ability to find ways to get better and to love each other is, is the most, it, it means the world to me. And, um, you know, we talked about senior night and we have seven seniors. And, and obviously I said, guys, they're not going to let us change the rules where all seven of you get to start. It took them 10 seconds to come up with a plan that they all were happy and comfortable with. And, um, something that will honor all of those guys on Friday night for our senior night. And I think that just kind of encompasses everything they mean to each other. And, um, you know, Tyson's mom and, and the rest of the senior parents, uh, mothers kind of did this thing for our seniors that they're going to put out each day this week on our Facebook page. And um, what they said about each other, what they said about their brothers and their ability to get together in the gym and how much it's meant to them. Um, they are a special group. Um, I, I wish I had another one of them coming in next year to replace them, but uh, they are just, um, they're, they're everything to this program and, and to me, and I love them to death. Mark, we appreciate your time. Obviously, it's been a special run for you and the program the last uh, four years. We hope you enjoy, uh, hopefully, the next six weeks or so. Hey, thanks a lot, Aaron. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Aaron. And, you know, he mentioned a couple times just the, how special that group of kids was. And the fact that you mentioned this was in the interview, we didn't have time to show it. Five losses since seventh grade. Yeah, that's pretty good, no matter how you slice it. Yeah, that that is uh, some very good basketball. And uh, you know, congratulations to the senior class and the run that they've put together. But like we said, it's it's unfinished business for Shawnee. Um, without looking ahead, looking ahead, they are the clear cut favorite. But anything can happen on any given night, as any of us know. Right. But I think this group, if they were to be knocked off at, at the district level that would be the ultimate disappointment to this group. You know, and Mark, from your experience with coaching, just knowing that it, how we take kids coming together, playing well, having success, all kind of being there for each other for granted because we see so much of it. 
when there are examples when you don't see that on the court or you don't see that in a school, it just makes kind of what Shawnee has done just that much more meaningful to, yeah, to their fans, certainly. Th th this has been a special group of young men, obviously. They, they held together very well. They, they found a way to, to share the basketball. You go, how do you share the basketball when one guy's getting 30 points a game? Well, look at the number of assists that Vermillion and Berkey and Wheeler have, and not just to George, but how they find other players on the floor, too. And, and Elwer, who, who comes in the middle and does such a great job, he rebounds, he scores, he, he uh, blocks shots and throws the ball out on the perimeter, and they get Mangus in transition. They have put together a really special way of playing a game of basketball right now. It's going to make them very difficult to be defeated. Go back to this group real quick, just to talk about their growth and the love that they have for each other that Coach Triplett talked about. Jaron Berkey was the man with this group when they were younger kids. That's the one everybody thought was going to be, you know, the kid in this group that would go places. Tyson Elwer was the first one to play varsity. It wasn't George Mangus. He came up halfway through his freshman year. And you talk about taking a role and embracing it. Jaron Berkey has done that this year. This is a young man who averaged over double figures a year ago. Right now, he's in the five to six point range per game. He, he'll knock down that key three for you, but he does all the little things. And him and Caden uh, Vermillion have become the glue guys for this ball club, in addition to what Tyson Elwer, George Mangus, Brady Wheeler, and company bring. You know, they have been just, just to take that away, egoless is what this ball club, I would say, is. It's a good way to describe them. Well, if Shawnee gets out of the WBL Invitational, essentially, in the top half of the bracket, uh, they will be in the district championship, and it could be against Wasion. Wasion having a great year at 15-2, and, and earlier on this week, Miles Holiday had a chance to catch up with Wasion head coach Chad Burt, courtesy of Whitmer Propane, and let's take a look at their interview with the coach. Coach Chad Burt with the Wasion Indians. Coach, tournament time. How exciting is this time of year for you? Well, this is what you play for all season. Um, you know, obviously, league is, is always at the top of our list of goals. But, you know, the first two goals of our, our you know, any season that we go into is, is try to win a league championship and, and try to make a tournament run. And, you know, sometimes tournament runs mean different things, different years to different teams. But, you know, you always try to give a heck and, and play your best basketball at the end of the season. Yeah, looking at everybody in your bracket, of course, the one that always stands out is Lima Shawnee. You know, they really stand out about everybody else. Everybody else kind of mixed in the bag a little bit. Who, who out there kind of concerns you a little bit in your, in your draw, in your bracket? Well, I, I tell you what, you know, you hit, hit the nail on the head. I think Shawnee is head and shoulders above everyone else. Um, then you got St. Mary's who's going to come in with three or four losses. Uh, Defiance is really playing well right now at the end of the season. Um, Napoleon's playing well. Uh, Wapakoneta. You know, you go right down the list. Uh, Brian's record's not great, but they've had some COVID issues and some injury issues, and they're getting healthy. And, and they're, you know, as, as you know, Miles with Titus Rohr inside and, and, and the shooters they surround him with, they can do some damage. But, you know, for us, any, anytime you go down to WBL country, um, it's, it's kind of a different brand of basketball, um, even then, I, I guess I would call that Northwest Ohio, but maybe not extreme Northwest Ohio. Um, it's a very physical brand of basketball. Uh, very well coached teams, very well prepared teams. So, um, you know, we try to schedule some some teams to prepare us for that. But until you see it on the court, it's, it's definitely a different brand of basketball. Coach, you talked about the WBL and being a physical style play. You guys kind of pride yourselves on being physical. Talk about your defensive approach and the physicality. Well, that, that's, you know, that that's kind of what we pride ourselves in. Uh, you know, we're, we're a pretty straightforward, not real complicated, generally man-to-man -man defensive team. Um, we try to challenge our kids that way. Uh, you know, um, with the football season just ending, it feels like, um, and, and I understand we're at the end of the basketball season, but man, it's been a weird feeling year. Uh, you see a lot of the same names on the basketball court for Wasion that, that you heard on the football field. Um, and, and that's kind of how our kids play. Our kids play tough. They, they, they're very physical. They pride themselves in that. We're, we're a pretty uh, undersized team. We're not real big. You know, for years, we were very spoiled with size and, and, and um, for a number of years, and we're not real big. So we kind of that's kind of how we have to play. Um, our kids pride themselves on going to the offensive boards. And again, as you said, playing physical. And so far, we've done a pretty good job of that this year. Coach, you guys had a, another great season, but you're a little bit under the radar. Do you think that's a product of being a defensive first team? And do you like being under the radar? Um, yeah, we don't mind it. Um, you know, we didn't get a lot of hype preseason. Um, and, and, and honestly, maybe rightfully so. We, we, you know, we brought some guys back, uh, but we were pretty green behind the ears a little bit. Um, and, and I think we're not real flashy. Coach, you talk about your hard-nosed approach with your basketball team. Who are some of the guys that really are hallmarks on that approach? 
Well, um, I, I could I could really go right down the list. Um, you know, Connor Penrod and Jonas Tester are kind of our two leaders, uh, both rebounding, both scoring. So we kind of rely heavily on those guys. But you know, any anytime you're a defensive minded first team, which we are, um, and, and and you know, as we kind of mentioned, you're a little bit under the radar and don't get all that hype, and it's a little bit of a grind to score for us. Uh, you know, I think you can go right across our starters, Colton DeGroff. Um, Isaac Wilson is, is, a, is a guy who will run through a wall for you, literally, um, you know, kind of a football first guy, but, but is very productive for us on the, on the uh, basketball court. Uh, Tyson Bridge, Easton Delgado is, is a second team All-State soccer player. Um, Noah Sauber, Jacob Hageman, um, you know, Carson Burt, Matt Shaw, we have crew powers, you go right down the list. And, 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 you know, guys you see on Friday and Saturday nights, but, but our practices are really a grind. And I, and I think that prepares us for the Friday, Saturday nights that we see. Last question, coach, the Wauseon Indians will make it to Columbus. If you. Uh, go on an incredibly hot run. Uh, we got to make perimeter shots and we keep, got to keep guarding and rebound like, like we have been. Um, but there's so much luck, as you know, teams getting to Columbus and, and obviously you got to be very good. So, you know, you, you got to have sometimes play the right opponents. When we made our Columbus run, some things dominoes fell and, and helped us out. Um, but there's a lot of luck and a lot of skill involved. But I think the reality is you got to be playing your best basketball at the end of the season. Uh, you got to be able to score with teams. And, and so that's going to be, you know, a big challenge for us is scoring with teams. So, uh, but again, I think we're playing solid basketball. Now let's just piece it together in one game at a time. I know it sounds cliche, but it's very true. Coach, we appreciate your tenacity tonight. Way to stick yeah. with it. There coach Chad Burt and the Wauseon Indians, go get them in the tournament, Coach. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Miles. Thanks a lot. Nice to hear from him as we take a look at the bracket there for the uh, Spencerville, the top, bottom half of the district. Of course, Wauseon there at 15-2. and two. Uh, you know, I'm not pronouncing them to the district final yet because they still got a deal with St. Mary's and Wapak. You mentioned Wapak being a, a tough team. They're coming on late 10 and 7, and it, uh, it could be a very interesting bottom half of that district. You know, I find something very interesting about this, Patrick. There are 11 teams in this district, eight of them in the Western Buckeye League, and typically those schools tend to vote for each other. Now, that's not out of prejudice. It's out of who you know and the, the weekly grind that you play against those teams every single week. And yet they took a team and who is not a Western Buckeye League team and made them second seed. I think that shows the respect that the coaches in this area have for Wauseon. I've seen St. Mary's. I think they're going to give Wauseon a tremendous basketball game if that turns out. And remember, Shawnee only defeated St. Mary's by eight. Now, Elwood didn't play. They only beat Shawnee by, by a handful of points. That could be a really good basketball game down the road, too. This is going to be a really good district, better than I think some people think. Miles, you've seen Wauseon play quite a bit, and something that the coach mentioned, and this stuck out to me, the physical style of basketball oh, yeah. that they play. And we've right. seen teams in the past didn't have that great of a record, although, of course, that doesn't apply to Wauseon, sure. but they play a stout form of basketball, and you think, well, how wouldn't that be lessened with guys who are scoring a lot of points and all that stuff? But that physical style of basketball can take you places and go pretty far in a tournament. I, I absolutely love covering their games because they are tough. They don't eat cereal in the morning. They chew nails up. That's how tough they are. And you better be aware because if you're not, you're going to be looking for chiclets on the floor. Your teeth are going to be on the ground. They're that tough. They're physical. They play great defense, that pack line principle, and they rebound. So anytime you play great defense and you rebound, you're going to have a chance in tournament play. Are they going to be able to score enough? Don't know. They got Tester who averages 14 a game, and they got uh, Penrod, 14 a game. Always searching for that third guy to score for them, though. I'll tell you what, from a sectional final forecasting perspective, them and Wapakoneta could be must-see TV just right. for the simple fact Wapakoneta is a very deliberate ball club. Uh, Trey Elkert in his first year taking over uh, the Wapakoneta program. They are a protege of his dad, Scott, at Jackson Center. A lot of Princeton-style mm -hmm. offense and principles there. And this is a team that, you know, when you look at the brass tacks, could give Wauseon everything they could handle. No disrespect to Salina, but we'll see what happens uh, coming up here in a couple weeks on the uh, sectional semis to move to the right to play Wauseon. And I mean, this really seems like a, a district where you you look at it and you go, okay, well, it's going to be Shawnee and probably going to be Wauseon. But you look at that, Defiance is set up to possibly pull an upset. St. Mary's, you know, is going to play tough. Hey, Wauseon, whoever they get out of there. Man, worst one six in a row. And don't count those guys out either. No. Van Ward no. is really playing well right now. And that Van Ward matchup with Defiance is going to be a really yeah. good basketball game.
So don't, don't count those guys out either. Absolutely. I'll let you have the last word on this yeah. one. Yeah, I mean, it's WBL basketball when you talk about the schools you just mentioned, right? Uh, Van Wert has played very, very well lately. They're a tough, hard-nosed team. They work hard. They play great defense. Uh, Walpock, you already mentioned it. Trey Elkert, go Beavers, by the way. Uh, <laughs> he, he does a fantastic job, and, and there's no surprise there. St. Mary's, a team that you, you said it. They caused Shawnee a lot of problems, and that's due largely in part to their length. They've got Austin Parks, who looks better every single time we see him play. He's six foot nine and a half, if you look at the roster. <laughs> and uh, he does a really nice job. They also start three other guys that are six three or taller. Latrey um, Williams, baby. Latrey's a great, great player, great ball handler, great leader of that team. So really looking forward to this district. Um, whether it's Wasion and Shawnee at the end or not, doesn't matter to me. It, it, whoever gets out of this district has a really good shot at making a deeper run. Plenty of great action. You'll see a lot of these games on WOSN, WTLW, WNHO as well. Plenty of action coming up in the next couple of weeks. Well, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, it's Division Three as we start looking at the districts in the third division. Stick around. This is the WOSN Selection Show. Welcome back to the WSN Selection Show. We're just trading stories about games that we've called, and some have been terrific, and some have been not terrific, to say, to say the least. A lot of terrific action coming up, though, as we transition to Division Three. We're going to start in the Toledo Central Catholic bracket. More of the teams up north, WNHO coverage area, and one of the surprising, well, not surprising, Archbold getting the two seed uh, up there is one of the best teams. Looking at the top half of that bracket first, Evergreen there at the, the three seed, and Evergreen, one of those teams where they were a team that had their season stopped. They were going to be in a regional final. And you look at them and think, man, 13 wins must be a pretty solid team. They got walloped pretty good last week, Miles. And it kind of made everyone step back and go. Sure did. You know, Evergreen was kind of looking, and they're still looking for a signature win against right. a, a top opponent. And I, I, I think they need one before they head into the tournament. Or it could be. It could be over quickly. Yeah, Coach Kiefer had a great line at halftime. They only scored three points against Archibald last Friday. He said they were looking for the bus at halftime to get on it and just leave. That's how bad <laughs> things were. But don't sleep on them. It was just one of those games. They, everybody has an off night once, a, once in a while. They have an unbelievable point guard in Evan Lumbreezer. The guy can score 6-1. He is quicker than a hiccup. And they have big post plays with the Leffler kid, too. So they're a team that is a little bit under the radar in that bracket. So don't sleep on them. But uh, Archibald's a real deal also. Vikings have an excellent chance to get to uh, the district semifinals, uh, they drew Otsego, the eighth seed, in that first game. Uh, the, you you got to like their odds against getting past either Eastwood or uh, MVCD, depending on what that looks like. Uh, but we'll see. They get against uh, Cardinal Stritch if Cardinal advance, advances, which right. it looks like they will. We don't want to count anybody out, but sometimes you just look at it and think, yeah, I think that's the matchup that'll happen. We'll see how that goes. On the bottom half of that bracket, we mentioned Archibald getting the two seed and looking at that particular side of it. Man, that's a, that's a great draw, Miles, I think, for Archbold. you, you got to like their chances getting to the district championship. Right, Archbold is unbelievable as how well they defend. They've held teams nine times under 30 points this year. So they can really defend, and they have so much quickness on the perimeter. They have three guys that are really like point guards with Gomez and Roth and DJ Newman all can score over 10 points a game, and they just don't turn the ball over. So anytime you don't turn the ball over and you play great defense, you really got to like your odds. Coach Frank does a great job there. And we heard Miles talk to Joe Frank earlier in the week. Let's hear from him. Coach Joe Frank with Archbold Blue Streaks. Thanks for joining us, Coach. Exciting time of year when the tournament gets rolling. Does it get a little more intense when you're coaching? Yeah, I think that's probably safe to say. Uh, the stakes get a lot higher. The games are more meaningful at the end of the regular season. And then obviously, whenever it's one and done, it gets to be real serious real quick. Yeah, how tough is it when you fall short of the, everybody's goal of winning a state title? How tough is it in that locker room with those seniors for the last time? Well, it's always tough because uh, seniors are always uh, a special group that you know are never going to be in the locker room again with you. And so it's always an emotional time. Um, and really, to be honest with you, losing the game uh, hurts, but uh, not ever having that group together again as a team is probably the toughest part of all. Right, right. Looking at your district, it, it's very balanced. Who are some of the teams that, you know, coming on late into the season that are really impressing you? Well, I think Cardinal Stritch is the one that jumps out at you right away, if I'm not mistaken. They started out the season one or three and one and four, and they're now 10 and four. I think they've won nine in a row, and 
they've been rolling up some big numbers on the offensive end. And uh, I know that they've got the, the Wilson kid back who signed at a D2 school, and he's where it starts, and they have a 6'8 kid inside. So I would say they're probably the, in my mind, favorite heading in. Um, Evergreen's obviously had a really good year. And then there are several other teams that will, um, will also be in the hunt. You just never know, tournament time. Right. Eastwood and, and Ottawa Hills is kind of an unknown commodity right now with only playing, you know, five or six games so far. And you've got some teams like Eastwood and Swanton and Liberty that all have had their moments throughout the course of the year. So I would say um, maybe Stritch would be the favorite, but there would be a whole lot of competition that may be able to get them on any given night. Yeah, Liberty gave you fits uh, about a week ago, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Yeah, what were they able to do that was uh, tough for you guys? Well, I think one of the things they did was they attacked us offensively when they were on offense a little bit better than we had seen them doing. And uh, we just didn't adjust real well to the um, quickness of some of their kids. Um, and we just, uh, you know, credit them. Sometimes it's easy to blame yourself and say what you didn't do, but I just give them a lot of credit. I think they played one of their best games of the year, and we're just fortunate to get out of there with a W. Yep. You guys have three really unique players on the perimeter. I think you got Noah Gomez, you got Roth, and, and DJ Newman. Talk about how how good those three are when they're on the court together. Well, I haven't seen them too much together on the floor so far this year. So, <laughs> um, you know, Noah missed the first eight games, and DJ's missed about uh, five or six games. So, yeah. They're really dynamic athletes, all three of them. And, um, you know, with Trey Theobald, who's a, a really good athlete playing the four spot, um, we think we can match up athletically with most teams. Um, those three certainly uh, are going to be uh, keys to our success, as any success we have moving forward. Um, they all have the ability to score the basketball. Um, DJ's a little bit bigger and can go inside and score a little bit more while Noah and Alex are more perimeter oriented, but they all three bring things to the table that are all going to help us be successful. The NWAL every year is extremely tough. How, how does that help sharpen your sword going into the tournament? Well, one of the things that we uh, have found is that when you go through our schedule, even though it's just a single round, the stakes are higher because it's only a single round. And so it's a little bit more like a tournament atmosphere uh, with regard to intensity, and, you know, to win our league, um, you just look at what Wasian's done the last several years, Evergreen last year, um, you, you got to be a pretty good team, and it, it, you're battle-tested as you head into the tournament after you've gone through our league. Coach, last question, we appreciate your time. Archbold will make a deep run into the tournament if you guys do what? If we stay healthy, uh, can – be a little bit more consistent shooting the ball and continue to the guard. I like it. Coach Joe Frank with the Archbold Blue Strace. Coach, good luck in the tournament. We appreciate your time. Thanks, Miles. All right. Heard last little bit from Archibald's head coach. Uh, you know, it looks like that they're in a pretty good position to make a run, as Archbold right. typically is. And I, I Otto Glandor fans may not want to hear this, but it always seems like there's at, at some point in the postseason, there's that collision. Yeah. And it's gone back and forth. It's, it's not a sure deal between either team, but Archibald you know, and their coach feel pretty good about the future here. Well, he's excited because he really hasn't had his full complement of weapons throughout the year. Now they're finally healthy. They haven't had to deal with COVID lately. So he's got everybody at his disposal for the first time this year. Looking forward to um, those matchups as uh, they get going. And, and an interesting thing here, just looking at the bottom part of that graphic, Ottawa Hills getting the fourth seed, only six right. and two, not getting a lot of games this season. That's going to be an interesting factor because you look at the possibility of do they have – enough games to really feel like they understand kind of their their offense or in their defense like do they really feel like they've got a good handle on it how will they do and this is assuming they get past either Swanton or, or uh, Genoa but that'll be interesting I think just to see an eight game team well they'll have nine or ten games by the time they get there about half their season getting into the playoffs that's gotta be tough for those teams because you really don't have everything that you want in the in your playbook right uh, so you're gonna tr still trying to figure out who you are and you're gonna have to play tournament games and you mentioned Swanton as well. Swanton's a pretty good team as well, so it'll be tough for them to get by a team with Swanton who's played twice as many games as them. Okay, well, we're not done with Division Three yet. We're heading to the Lima District, Ottawa-Glandorf, and more. I talk with 
Tyson McLaughlin, head coach of Ottawa Glendorf. And we look at the Lima District. Stick around. This is the WOSN Selection Show. <laughs> We're back, everybody. The WSN Selection Show. We're well glad done. to have you. Well done, Aaron. <laughs> you know, it's it's the show's almost over. No matter what, the show's almost <laughs> over. Lima District we're getting into, and we're still in Division Three. And taking a look at this one, and um, Ottawa Glandorf, the number one seed, getting that once again. And there is a lot of teams that are kind of hovering around the 500 spot. As you see, the top half of the bracket, and. When I see teams that are kind of in the 500 and you don't know like the, the, the entire backstory, like you look at some of those teams, probably not going to get very far, not going to get out of that first game. But, you know, Coldwater was a team that was hovering around 500 a couple years ago, Mark, and they, they made a heck of a run out of that. Well, they did. They upset Ottawa Glendorf in the tournament that year, two years ago. Then they went all the way to the regional finals. So, and Bluffton played OG tough early in the year. They shot the ball extremely well. It was at Bluffton, too. It was over, I think it was over Christmas. That, Christmas games you kind of throw out anyway, but then there are some teams that could compete with OG, but they are the class of that upper bracket. I asked Tyce McLaughlin last season if they were circling cold water on the calendar because mm -hmm. they pulled off the upset, and Tyson, to his credit, wouldn't take the bait, but he also didn't say no. <laughs> Earlier this week, I had a chance to talk to him, thanks to Structure Outdoor, as he looks back on the last season and how it helped them get ready for this season. And joining us on the selection show this year, Ottawa Glandorf head coach, Tyce McLaughlin. Coach, thanks for taking time to be with us. Uh, just want to get your initial thoughts on, uh, once again, being voted uh, into the number one seed again. Well, you know, it's you know, like we were just talking. It's crazy times. There's there's nothing normal about this year and how everything's kind of transpired and everything. But, you know, we're thankful to have the opportunity to, to play. And, you know, we're excited about, you know, the tournament. You know, you were one of a handful of schools in the area that didn't get the proper finish to the season. You guys were headed to play Evergreen in the regional finals, and then COVID happened and the season got postponed, later shut down entirely. Um, number one, how did that impact your off season, and what impact has it had on your your regular season up to this point? Well, you know, it's something that it's still, you know, it's hard to it's hard to swallow. You know, you, you try to move on, and, and, but at the same time. You know, that was very, very unfortunate and not, you know, obviously for the guys that we still have in our program, but those seniors that for their season to end just so abruptly uh, when they were playing so well, um, you know, it's just, you know, it kind of left a bad, you know, a sour taste in your mouth. And I and I think our guys, our current players right now are using that kind of as motivation. I think they they understand the, the stakes. They understand how fast something be, can can be taken away from you. So, you know, I think they, you know, they play with a little sense of urgency and they, they understand and appreciate it a little bit more this year. That's been a common refrain from a lot of coaches that I've talked to, not just in, in basketball, but also in football. And from the outside looking in, you look at the records, you kind of see the, the stats that um, Ottawa Glendorf compiles year in and year out. And, it's, and it would be difficult to see where a particular turn had been made or if there had been an increase in effort, because it always seems like you guys are great every year. Um, what specifically have you seen this season out of the the guys that you know the juniors from last year sophomores what have you that have stepped up and what have you seen them add to their game or change in their game and elevate it to an extent uh because of everything that happened last year well i, I think you know just that that element of the unknown and uh not being able to finish off i think you know they they wanted to do everything within their power if they had that opportunity to maximize it and make the most of it so no, and I think the one thing that I've seen this year, and I think probably all coaches could probably attest to it, is that next man up mentality. You, you never know uh, when somebody's going to get an illness. I mean, we've had a couple guys that you know, were under the weather, and you have to sit them out, you know, you know, 72 hours, you know, just to make sure because you don't want that, you know, to, that domino effect to, to, to take place and it to, to wipe out your whole, you know, your whole squad. So um, we've had a lot of different guys have to step up. Um, you know, maybe it was just one game, their role really changed. But, you know, having different guys being able to do that has been something that I've been very proud of this year. Has that been an additional challenge, just knowing that it, you, you can't just look at a kid if, if who has, you know, the sniffles or something shows up and go, hey, you know, you know, shake it off, man, <laughs> rub, rub some dirt on it or whatever. It's like, no, you have to you have to take that seriously. And we have to find someone else and and make sure that this happens, because it's not just 
you know, your health and well-being, but we're also looking at the possibility of maybe the team catches something, maybe we're shut down just out of precaution. Absolutely. And, you know, it is, it's, it's every single time, you know, you know, our, our principal walks into the gym, I get nervous, you know, I think something's going to happen. And, you know, it's, it's just the times that we're dealing with, you know, I don't want to make, you know, make light of it, but you know, it, it is, it's one of those things that you just can't really prepare for. And it, as a coach, as an athletic director, it, 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 there's a lot of concerns because, you know, we're, we're heading into the postseason right now. And, you know, just on a snap of a finger, something crazy could happen. And we're in the same situation as we were in last year. So um, you're kind of sitting on, I'm kind of sitting on needles here every once in a while when you really start to think about it. You recently came off last week, obviously a big game against Shawnee. You guys were on the shorthand of that. Um, do, do games against tougher opponents closer to the postseason, does that give you a better idea of what kind of shape your team is in, not just physically, but also mentally and, and just what is possible from you guys as you head into the playoffs? Absolutely. I, I, you know, that's why we play the schedule that we do. We want to play the, you know, the best teams that we possibly can uh, to prepare us for March. And uh, you know, that game, it it taught us a lot about ourselves. You know, uh, we, we were in, in a good position for most of that game and Shawnee's a fantastic team. You know, they're, they're as good as advertised. And, you know, we went toe to toe with them and had opportunities to, to finish it off. And unfortunately we weren't able to, they made some big plays down the stretch. And, uh, you know, we talked to our guys, if we give that type of effort and, and we perform at that type of level, we're going to be playing basketball for a while. And, uh, you know, I think that's something that we can take. We're never in there for, you know, for moral victories, but at the same time, I think it taught us, it taught our guys quite a bit about themselves. And lastly, just looking at the, the sectional that you'll be in and it's easy for, you know, guys like us in the media to look at it and go, Oh, you know, it, it's, it's looking pretty good for you guys up to a point, but there are some, uh, there are some really good teams that you could be coming up against in this bracket, a potential rematch uh, against Coldwater, um, uh, another rematch from earlier this season uh, from Lima Central Catholic. Um, how far do you really look in considering the fact that you have a buy the first week when everyone else is getting started, how far down do you, do you look into possible matchups and game planning against who your opponents could possibly be? Well, you, as a coach, as a coach, we, you got to dive in and, you know, kind of take a look at all the possibilities because you want to be as prepared as possible. You know, you don't want to just be waiting to the night of, you know, and, and, and try to get that preparation. You know, there's a lot of things that go into it. Uh, but, you know, our focus will be one game at a time. And that's all we ever talked about with our guys is, you know, one game at a time. And, uh, you know, you go out there and you take care of business, but, you know, as coaches, you always look at the brackets. It's, you know, yesterday was fun to, you know, had the, had the draw and then get with our coaches and look at the other brackets and talk to everybody. And, you know, you look at those potential matchups and who could play who, um, you know, I think that's just, you know, the love of the game, but, uh, you know, uh, we'll, we'll start breaking film down and start looking at some of these possible matchups and, you know, we'll be as ready and prepared as possible. Wishing the best of luck, coach. First game, uh, February 26th, you'll get the winner of Bluffton and Tenora. Ottawa head coach, Ottawa Glendorf head coach, Heis McLaughlin. Coach, thanks for your time and good luck this postseason. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thanks to uh, Coach McLaughlin for doing the interview. Thanks to Structure Outdoor for sponsoring it. Uh, you know, Ottawa Glendorf looks pretty good coming out of that particular district, but uh, the, see the top half of that again there. Coldwater kind of looming at 10 and 9. I don't have any inside information that I think Coldwater is primed to make any particular run, but I just look at that and I think it could be Coldwater coming out of that bottom part of that top half bracket. OG and Coldwater, I think, will be a, a pretty darn good district semifinal. It's become almost a yearly tradition. Those two play each other, and Coldwater does not hesitate at the draw to go on the same side of the bracket as Ottawa Glendorf. They had their number two years ago. They put together a magical run that culminated in a you know trip to the regional finals at BGSU. Um, but you know we'll see how things go. But I'm really really intrigued with the bottom side of the bracket. Yeah, we were talking about physical play. Coldwater was those teams. That, one of those teams that I was talking about. But that bottom half of the bracket. Might even be more interesting as we take a look at that one, and that is uh, there are some humdingers there, and I think that a couple of teams, obviously Wayne Trace under head coach Jim Lender getting the two seed LCC there at number three. We'll hear from Frank Kill in just a minute. Um, Bath is looming at the five seed Evan Skelter at ten and nine, and you think Bath really after 
after this year, and they're a they're a young team, and they're a quickly improving team. Yeah, and something you have to remember about Bath is that they play in the WBL as well. Just like Ottawa Glendorf, they play a lot of Division II teams, a lot of the teams that we talked about earlier in the show. They've been through quite a grind this season. You mentioned it. They're a very young team, a team that's really starting to come together under a younger head coach and Adam Burris. Uh, again, go Beavers, go Pirates. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I love Bath. Again, it's such a tough bottom half of that bracket. Uh, a Bath-LCC matchup would be fun, an LCC uh, Wayne Trace matchup would be awesome. A Bath Wayne Trace matchup would be awesome. Uh, this this bottom half's great, but yeah, watch out for the Wildcats. Why not? It's it's a team that, like we said, um, they, they played a tough schedule, and that's that bodes well for a tournament run. Bath Bath has nine players on their varsity roster. Eight of those nine have started at least one game for them. A much improved ball club, a team that wasn't expected to do anything this year, and they have no seniors. This is a team starting four juniors, one freshman, Braden Flea Hardy. Mark, Mark Schein, he yeah. has really grown this year. He really has physically and on the court. He's a taller, bigger kid yes. than he was at the beginning of the year, too. LCC defeated Bath by seven in the tip-off. They beat him by four a couple weeks later. That was on December 8th, so they've had a whole season to grow. We talk about that, can you beat a team three times? I, I, I don't get into that too much. It's been a long time since they played. The Wildcats are a lot better. LCC is very good. They played that great schedule that they played. That'll be a really, really good matchup should that come to fruition. And it should be interesting, too, that looking at that 7-8 matchup, Riverdale taking on Liberty Benton, and the BVC has been something of a head-scratcher this mm -hmm. year for, mm -hmm. uh, for a lot of us, maybe for some of the folks even in the BVC as well. Liberty Benton, one of the top teams in the BVC, even though they have a sub-500 record, they've done well in conference. Lipsick doing very well outside of conference. Of course, we'll talk more about Lipsick on the show tomorrow, but that Riverdale-Liberty Benton matchup could go either way, and, you know, if they, if they get to that next round... Who knows what can happen against Wayne Trace? When they played each other just a few weeks ago, 63-60 was the final. Riverdale right. got the win. Here's the kicker, though. LB was out there was without their two top scorers that night. So definitely something to look to look at. Yeah, Mark. We're talking about young week. teams. Wayne Trace is young too. Mm -hmm. Now they yeah. obviously have a whole season of playing together now, but that's right. a very young basketball team as well. It's very talented. We'll see how those young kids play when they get tournament pressure, though. Yeah, think ton, about tons of guard play at Wayne yes. Trace. I mean, they can get up and down the floor with the best of them, and the sin to sin for big wins. Wayne Trace has been to that district final the last two years. They haven't been able to get over the hump. It was cold water in, eight, in uh, 19 and 20. It was Ottawa Glandorf. Coach Jimmy Linder does an outstanding mm -hmm. job getting his teams ready for tournament play. Let's see if they can potentially get there in 2021. And a coach that knows plenty about tournament experience and tournament wins and tournament success is head coach Frank Hill of Lima Central Catholic, Empowered Sports Center, sponsoring uh, Aaron Matthews' interview with head coach Frank Hill. Let's give it a listen. Lima Central Catholic head basketball coach Frank Hill joining us here on the WOSN Selection Show. And Frank, a third seed, in my opinion, well-deserved for your ball club based on the body of work. I know that there's a few marks on that right side of the column on the L that you would love to have on the left for the W. But by and large, uh, your season has been a pretty good one, hasn't it? Well, the fact that we're still playing, I mean, it's been a great one. Uh, you, know, you know, obviously, like you talked about the... The wins and losses, you know, we do put a schedule together to hopefully challenge us to, to get us ready for the tournament, and that's what we play for. Not being in a conference, you know, this is what you do play for at the end of the season. So, you know, it's uh, one game at a time, and, you know, we're looking forward to it. You, you and I had the opportunity to speak on Sunday uh, during the tournament draw, and you talked about a couple schools that gave you guys the two seed uh, in the uh, district. Ottawa Glendorf was the unanimous one, but I'm sure that made you feel good and also was a sign of respect to your ball club, too. Oh, definitely. You know, when you play Ottawa during the season, you, you get a kind of a, a feel of where you're at, you know, for, with your ball club. And, you know, that was early on where we were at, too, because, you know, we were kind of transitioning from football to basketball and, 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 you know, give our guys a lot of credit. You know, they went in that game with a lot of emotion, a lot of energy. And that's what an LCC Ottawa game comes down to. And, and I think Tyson and I, we've got that love-hate relationship with one another. And, you know, Ottawa, the number one seed, you know, we're, we're definitely, we just want to get an opportunity to play them again. You have um, Ottawa Glendorf as the one, Wayne Trace is the two, yourself as the three. Um, top three seeds really played out as they, as you thought. Um, was there any surprise to you, whether it was bracket, you know, shakedown as the draw progressed or any of the seeding numbers? I mean, I know Bath was a five seed, and to be perfectly honest, they wasted no time potentially jumping to you, did they? We're stirring the pot there, aren't we? But, uh, you know, I think, you know, Adam's got, he's got his ball club playing pretty well right now. And, you know, we played Bath twice during the season, you know, but it was the first two weeks of the season. And, you know, they're a different team, but so are we. So, you know, it's exciting. You know, I get, I get to have a home game. But, you know, I was a little shocked that, that 
you know, Bath would come our way, but, you know, hey, he doesn't have to leave Lima. You know, he gets to host a game and then come, you know, cross town a little bit to, to, uh, to come over to our place. But, you know, I know he's got a first, you know, he's got a tough round matchup with, with Jefferson. So it's, uh, it's, it's going to be interesting, but it's basketball. And, and I just hope our kids continue to get to play. You know, you still have a couple weeks left of the regular season. Uh, I want to talk about your point guard, DeMar Foster, and the job that he has done this year. Um, and for a moment... You know, it seems like he has hit a wall, that freshman, that proverbial freshman wall. You know, maybe you see it at the college level, but you've asked an awful lot of this young man, and he, by and large, has delivered for you this year, hasn't he? Oh, he definitely has. You know, I think on Saturday when we played Lima Senior, it was kind of a, an eye-opener of, of the caliber of basketball that we want to play. And, you know, Lima Senior really exposed us as a team, but, you know, DeMarc really kept his composure. And as a freshman, he really uh, stepped up to the challenge, and he took, he took that upon himself to know that, like, hey, you know, I can play and, and, and to be a, uh, the general of the basketball team for Lima Central Catholic, that, that's a lot of uh, expectations. And I think DeMar and my other two freshmen have really done a, a job, job well done, uh, you know, kind of carrying that load. You, you went through this youth movement before, four years ago, with Rossi Moore, Nate Stolle, and Sean Thomas when they were freshmen. Now they're seniors, and now it's like part due, so to speak. And you mentioned Billy and um, Billy Burke. Carson Parker, um, they've, they've done everything you asked, haven't they? They have, and I think they've done it because of the leadership of Rossi Moore and, and Nate Stolle, the two seniors that kind of been there, done that. You know, they haven't been asked to do more than what they can't handle, and, and I think Rossi's been a great leader for, for them to see what it's like. You know, Carson and, and Billy were my two ball boys since the time they were in second grade, so they've been around Coach Kill. They, they've heard locker room talk before, so their expectations are, are just as high as mine. Yeah, and you talked about Rossi Moore. What a job that young man has done for you this year. I mean, he's been your leading scorer at almost 16 points a game, and it seems like as he goes, your ball club goes uh, throughout the year. But just his progression, freshman, sophomore, sophomore to junior, junior to senior, has been unbelievable. He really has, but he's put, he's put the work into it, and that's, that's kind of what you see out of seniors. They take that, to, they take that next step of, of, of you know, capabilities. They take that step of, of just leadership roles, too. And, you know, just before I came on the set here, you know, he wants the keys and he wants the lights turned on, you know, to get ready for the game tonight. Yeah, and as we tape this, uh, you're, you're playing Delphus Jefferson, a team that you could potentially see here again in a couple of weeks. Is that something that, as a coach, that you kind of think about maybe in the back of your head, but don't, you know, so I, won't, I want to say use the word glorify, so to speak. Well, I mean, you, you use it as a teaching moment. Like, hey, what we do tonight is something that we could potentially do down the road. You know, there's been times where, we play Spencerville late in the season. We play Valenese late in the season. But you know, right now we've we've had our opportunities to to get better, and tonight's another opportunity. What is the biggest thing you want to see out of your ball club in the last two weeks heading to the tournament? I just build some momentum, continue to build that uh, cohesiveness, that chemistry that we want to, that teams have. You know, so hopefully we get that opportunity to make a run. And, but it's going to be one game at a time, and it's going to take a total team effort. I know, Frank, uh, your ball clubs are always well prepared. Uh, you and your staff do an outstanding job of getting the guys ready. Best of luck uh, through the rest of the regular season. You got some big matchups. You still got Liberty Benton. You still got Defiance on the docket. You got a matchup with Salina this weekend and Delphus Jefferson as we record this, but also as you get set for the tournament and uh, hopefully a nice lengthy run for the Thunderbirds. Well, I appreciate it. It's always a pleasure. And then I just, I'm just glad the kids get to play basketball. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. We are on the home stretch here of the WOSN Selection Show. Wrapping up Division Three. when we come back, we go Southwest. Stick around. Welcome back. Final time on the WOSN Selection Show as we take a look at the last part of Division Three in the Southwest, looking at the uh, Northmont High School District and starting in Dayton 1. And we see, uh, as far as local teams concerned, Anna there at 15 and 6, looking uh, in a pretty good position. And as, uh, as Mark Schein mentioned on the break and as you uh, follow that particular area, as you know, uh, they like to give the teams that aren't the top teams the buys. Well, what happens is you get to place yourself on a bracket, and for whatever reason, the teams up north choose to take buys traditionally, and the teams down in the southwest choose to play traditionally, and that's what Anna's chosen to do. So Anna 15 and 6, they'll get that matchup against Mechanicsburg, and Northeastern at 7 and 7 will kind of wait for the winner of that matchup, which we expect will be Anna. Of course, like I said, anything can happen. And for sales coming out of the MAC, just having a, a, a tough year comparison to the, the seasons they've had the last couple of years. Versailles, really one of the best teams in the area, certainly one of the best teams in the MAC, to say the least. 
Uh, seven and 14, just a little bit on the young side this year. Yeah, they're young. They've got three sophomores that are starting for them. Coach Travis Frank knew that this was going to be a rebuild year after being MAC champions in 2019-20, but he really likes what he's got with his team. His kids do compete. They're not. They're just not scoring the basketball as well as they have in years past. But like I said, three sophomores, the future is very bright for the Versailles Tigers, I think, next year. We'll see how they grow and how they develop as they move on. And I uh, want to show the last bracket in the southwest area, Dayton 3, and at the involving Indian Lake at 9 and 11. At what should be a very competitive matchup against Brookville. Not really sure you know, who would come out on top of that one. Green on getting the uh, seventh seed, and if Indian Lake gets past that, they'll meet them. And um, that is a particular, you see that sectional, very competitive, it looks like, on paper anyway. Uh, it really looks like that could be anyone's, anyone's sectional at this point. Yeah, those sectionals actually get underway next weekend as well. Yeah. That week bump uh, for the Southwest District and for most of the other uh, uh, districts in the state of Ohio. But uh, the Northwest District, we got uh, two weeks from the time uh, this show originally airs. So just like that, that's one, two, and three divisions in the books. So I want to thank all these gentlemen for being a part of the WOSN Selection Show. Stick around tomorrow because we'll break down Division 4, and there is plenty more to talk about in all of Division 4. So for all these guys and for all of the WOSN staff, I'm Patrick Hamler. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.